So, uh, yeah, yesterday we had 10 cent results, which um, you'll see now in the lower time frames that um, always messes up uh, any strategy that you have because uh, um, when those results come out, it tends to drive our markets in one direction uh, based on the results and uh, nothing else uh, matters. Um, no virus, no political noise, no, no uh, recession, nothing. Okay, so anyway, I normally stay out of the market, which is exactly what I did yesterday. But what has transpired is we have pretty much, um, so there's a there's two things here. So the first thing is we've got a, a crossover the 50 and 20 day uh, EMAs right now on the daily. Okay, we do have, and that's a, a golden cross, some people call it, but that is a bullish signal. We've got a double tap on the 150 here, and uh, that to me is just indicating that we are extremely overbought, and that's what your oscillator is telling you as well. We are at a level, which is true, and um, we've you know tried twice to get through there and failed. Now, if you look at the US markets, we've got head and shoulders all over the place. Um, we've broken through some key levels. We've broken through some key trend lines. And it is looking a little bit bearish on those markets right now. So are we going to follow suits? Hard to say, um, because we are dollar driven as well. And um, the view is that we're going to have a, a pretty strong dollar for quite some time still. So at this stage, if we just run through the different scenarios, 10 cent is up 2% right now, obviously based on its results yesterday. Uh, and if we look at the S&P was down 1.75% yesterday. It's, it's flat at the moment, down 0.013. The NASDAQ, which is what we really need to worry about, is down 1.23 yesterday. And our NASDAQ futures right now is flat at 0.05 down. And the last thing that we really need to pay attention to is our RAND dollar. And that's 18.50, which is uh, RAND is weaker, dollar is stronger which is what we are expecting to happen. Uh, so Tencent and the RAND could drive us up. Um, international markets could drive us down. It really just depends which way traders on the JSC are going to drive us. And remember that the, the Aussie, the volumes on the Aussie are far lower than, than the big international markets. So, you know, manipulation is far easier here for the big institutions. So, with that all in mind, where are we? So as far as I'm concerned, we are still in a range. Um, you'll see 10 cent results and then uh, sell off. Uh, I'm assuming this last bar is nonsense data. Let me just confirm that. Yep, that's nonsense data. Don't pay attention to the last bar on the chart. So we read it up, came down. And I think the key thing here is, okay, apart from this little spike up, but that's a lower high, well, it's lower than that, and it's lower than that. So three lower highs in a row. Put that bottom trend line in as well. We have a megaphone formation. So a break to the upside gives us a measured move of this last run. A break to the downside gives us the height of the megaphone. Okay, I'm kind of uh, on the fence with uh, with Aussie at the moment. So we, we're sitting here at this, well, we're not sitting here, but we've bounced off this area of 40, 45, 900, 45, 915. And um, that is an area of significance. We also have, let's go back all the way here. We've got this trend line here. Okay. Now, if I just fine tune that up there, bring that there, you'll see it's a bit of a flag that forms. But I think... Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to the triangle it's forming. Okay. So this trend line here is our line in the sand. And this horizontal support line here is also a line in the sand. So those intersect right here at 45884. Um, oscillators aren't giving me any clues at the moment all over the place. Mm, you know, the stochastic MACD is pointing down, which indicating downward trend, yeah, okay, I suppose we could argue that it is a, a downward trend, not a, a decent one, as far as I'm concerned, this is a range scenario, and we do have a couple of areas of support that are going to influence us as well, 
and there's one more that we need to do which is right there so and there's even another one like that okay so those are it's kind of um the layers that we're gonna we're gonna have to achieve so at the moment uh if we're looking at the three hour is every rally we need to sell into if we just come down to the hour and you'll see what i mean so uh, you know on tuesday we had rally into the 61.8 of the previous uh, move down and then sell off continued to sell off onto support 10 cent results came up boom all the way back to test the top the, the previous highs so that area there so i suppose um you know if I'm looking at that from the side because that's is what i am at the moment um these are the two areas that uh, i'd like to watch and What's bugging me though is this is a thousand three hundred points. So even a break below here doesn't give me a decent stop area to the upside, and a break to the upside doesn't give me a decent stop because the stop area is too wide. So that to me just says uh, just wait for a better opportunity. And for me, the opportunity to the downside is going to be a be a break below the low of, yes, of yesterday. I want to see a retest and then a rollover. So if we see a retest on the 15 minutes and it starts rolling, that would get me short. Um, if we get a break to the upside and we pull back onto it, it may get me long. Um, I'm just uncomfortable with the longs at the moment at the levels that we're at right now. I would prefer to be long um, off structure further down. And uh, you know the fact that we've rejected this high What's that? One, two, three. That's four times, um, pretty much this month. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of sort on the fence of this at the moment. You know, there, there, there's probably going to be some some short term trades where you're going to find it on the 15 minute. But even the 15 minute, the last two days, look at this up and down above the moving averages. There's no real clear direction. Uh, yeah, I think people are just uh, capitalizing on short-term gains right now. They're not really uh, driving it in a direction. And uh, for me, that means stay out of this. Don't bother with it. Because all that's going to happen is you're going to think you've got a great trade. Go away for a cup of tea and come back and you'll be stopped out. So if you're not sitting in front of this and you're trading a five-minute chart, I think five minutes or the three minutes, even that... Even the five minutes doesn't give me much confidence. Now, Monday was a, a good trend day, you know, trend to the downside. Um, this year was not a trend day. This year was not really a trend. I suppose we could argue that the 10 cent results was a trend day. By the time you figured it out mm. of what's happening, you'd probably been in up here somewhere. I suppose it's still a decent trade. But it's not something I like doing. Okay, so for me right now, Uh, sit on sit on the side for this. I do have some trades running on the S and P right now, which I think offers me a little bit more structure, and uh, we've got some downside pressure coming there uh, with the Aussie. Uh, until this trend line breaks, I think this is the the line in the sand. So this area here, forty five seven three six. Until that breaks and we retest it, then I think I'll start taking a bearish stance. But right now I'm fairly neutral. For as long as we're hovering between 47.134 and 45.736. You know, there was another trend line yesterday. And I did mention it to some of you, which was there, which uh, was looking for a short entry sort of at the gap close here. That didn't materialize. We went past it. So, you know, that just switched me off completely and got out of it and stayed out of it. Okay, so yeah, this downward trend line is the area that I'm paying attention to. So line of sand for me today is 45.736. And um, I think I'll probably put an alert in there just to see what price does at that area. And uh, if it does break through, come back, turn it into resistance on sort of a 15 minutes or a 30 minute chart. And preferably before lunchtime, then I'll take it. Um, if it happens after lunchtime, I'll just uh, ignore this 
until Friday and then continue on the US markets. That's pretty much my plan for the day. Anyway, hope that helps guys and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Cheers for now.